Well, that's the quickest... Oh, let's fix my mustache. That was the quickest transition from, from one room to another this whole game. Right, give me some points for that. Let's make our way around the room. Survey says... Laudanum Cameron's Chemists. Laudanum, a medicine for coughs. It is what Dr. Clark prescribed for Mrs. Asher. This subject will ah. be useful to me. I don't have a cursor again. Um, let's try to go in and back out Laudanum. again. There it is. Weird. Okay. Sedative. Barbituric acid. Johnson Company. I know this medicine. It is a powerful sedative. This subject would probably be useful to me. I'm going to put a dog to sleep. All right. Let's keep making our way. Is that the bed or the chair? How hopeful. This place is a real mess. Misaligned bed. That Mr. <laughs> Cust is not very concerned about order and balance. Let's straighten this bed up, shall we? A little scooch and scooch. Oh, we can't. Boo! Look at all this nonsense here. Look at all this. Clues and clues and clues. Too bad we already know Cast who did it. <laughs> He keeps his pencils and sharpens them until there is nothing left. It is clear that he did not grow up in luxury. I have to get the ribbon. How am I going to do it? Uh, well, let's do this. You, uh, how do you take the ribbon off on these things? Here we go. The right hand heel has been removed. Yep. And this one will be removed. The left hand heel has been removed. Poor Mr. Poirot. I'm quite sorry for. Look at that. Look at that. We got this. Something is blocking the ribbon. And here is the ribbon. Let us see if it was indeed used to write the letters sent by ABC. I only need the ink ribbon for my inquiry. I will let Jack clean the keyboard if he wishes. I... All the letters announcing the murders were written on Kirst's typewriter. Well, of course. We already know it was cussed. Did we got Cust him. Did drop it when he opened the window? Or was it Mrs. Marbury while she was cleaning? John Milligan, Managing Director, Silky Legs, Frederick Street, Leicester. To A.B. Cust, Marbury's Guest House, 1935, May the 21st. Dear Sir, Further to our letters dated 5th and 10th of the month, we confirm we are you as door-to-door -door salesman, according to the conditions stated in our previous letters. We will send you the articles by mail and also a red field typewriter you will be using for every business letter. Regarding the schedule of your rounds, please do as following. June 21, Andover. Arrive by train the 20th in the evening and get room at Station Hotel. Start your turn in the north part of the town. This letter establishes that Cust went to Endover, but the ink has hidden the destinations of his other trips. 
I know from Mrs. Marbury that he went to Churston. I just have to show that he went to Bexhill, and I will have proved that he was present at all the crime scenes. The crime scenes. All right, I bet it's in the ABC circled. We'll do that one last. A long-bladed knife. A murderer's weapon. This subject will probably be useful to me. And finally, the ABC. It's an ABC. Wait. What? Why didn't I inspect it? That's weird. It's an ABC. Oh. Oh, very weird. I thought that it would be a little more dramatic than that. Look at his books. It's closed. Uh, let's use the knife to open it. This knife is very useful. Who knows? Maybe it never cut anything other than string. Stockings. Look at all the ABCs, though. ABC guys. Enough to sign about a dozen murders. In his cupboard, Houses, white shirts, everything has been washed very well. The Bexhill Daily Paper, dated from the day of the Bexhill mother. There we got our proof. Most probably the basting dress repaired by Mrs. Marbury's expert hands. All the main articles referring to the ABC case are here, from the Churston murder onwards. Nothing before that date. Let's use our brain cells. Where was Cust at the time of the Bexhill murders? Bexhill local paper? Um... Bathing dress? No. Rented the room to someone else. There we go. The register shows that Cust did not sleep at the guest house on the day of the murder. Where was he? Bexhill. The Bexhill paper reveals it. Cust bought this newspaper in Bexhill on July the 25th. Boom. There we go. What are we doing? Search Cust's room. Okay, I tried searching and using everything on everything, and as I was just... I decided to just move my cursor around all over the place and stumbled upon this. So I don't know what this is. Man, this dark stain. It could be blood, but goodness knows how long it has been there. No use. Please let that be the last section of this room. I've seen all there is. Alrighty. Finally, that took forever. I cut out a lot of me looking around at nothing. Goodbye, Mrs. Marbury. Thank you for your help. I look forward to seeing you again, Mr. Poirot. Ah, Chief Inspector. I was about to leave. Good evening, Chief Inspector. Welcome. Please excuse me, I must go to the kitchen. I'll leave the queue of Mr. Cust on the counter. I'm sorry I'm late. I've spent ages with the Doncaster police. And you? I have established one fact. On three occasions, Cust was at the scene on the day of the crimes. Oh, is that it? <laughs> Are we not going to use our brain cells? I thought we were going to. Uh, let's see, looked at that. Can't go in here. What, are we just talking to this dude? Let's look at him first. I had best talk to Chop. Oh, alrighty then. I thought we were. I've listened closely to what you have to say, Poirot. For me, there's no doubt. Cust is guilty. 
Do you have any element that might prove the contrary? That is what we're going to look for. Where? Let's now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. Was it possible for Cuss to have killed the three victims? Alrighty, yes. He has a knife. He was in Churston. All the letters point to uh, his typewriter. All right, he was in Bexel. He was in Andover. ABC. Was a possible... Wait, are there any common points between Cust and the killer? Uh, yeah, the letters from his typewriter. He has a knife. He has ABC guides. Nice! Is Cust's behavior suspicious? Uh, let's see. He keeps the newspapers. He li- uh, he... he lied about his destination, and he had blood on him. Guilty. The evidence yeah, against knew. Cust is overwhelming. His presence at the scenes, the knife, the blood-stained shirt, the ABCs in a box. C'est vrai. However, the blood Mrs. Marbury saw on Cust's shirt may have been his own. According to his medical records, he suffers from hemoptysis. The murderer cuts a Carmichael's throat from behind and the blood spurted outwards. You would expect the murderer's shirt to be stained on the sleeves, not on the buttonholes. Yet we see quite the opposite. You would expect the murderer to keep the newspaper articles about his crimes. But Cust's collection starts in Cheston, as if it discovered the case rather late. Hmm, I agree it's troubling, but it doesn't change my mind. There's small details that we should be able to clear up by questioning Cust. When can you talk to him? Doncaster is sending him to us on the first train. As they questioning him? I bet it was the uh, landlady. He says he can't remember a thing. It's plausible. The potato woman. Dr. Say suffers from absences and amnesia. Mrs. Marbury has confirmed this. He may have done the murders in an altered state. A familiar situation. It's not enough to clear his name. Dr. Thompson insisted that even if you don't know what you're doing, you never commit a murder without wanting to. Très intéressant. I shall remember that. Right. I'll go and examine the suspect's room. Chief Inspector, I took the liberty of removing a few clues to examine at home. All right, we'll discuss them tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to see if you've missed something. Go to Scotland Yard. Yes, sir. To Scotland Yard, please. 